So effectively, the 1660 Ti is basically an almost 1070 Ti with a die space of a 1070. Now I say die space of 1070, people are going to bring up, no, the 1070 is a die space of like 331 mil. No, it's actually not because it's a cut down 1080, right? And if you were to cut down a 1080 and, and basically multiply the ratio of cuta cores between them, you'd see that the 1660 Ti basically has the exact same die space as the 1070. Meanwhile, it clearly outperforms it by, you know, I would say on average at least 5 to 15 percent. It's basically almost a 1070 Ti, maybe a hair behind the Vega 56. But meanwhile, it uses just slightly less energy than a 1060, you know. And I think that's actually incredibly impressive, um, at least compared to the rest of Turing. And it really got me thinking right. I saw Tech Power Up review go, this is the most efficient card they've ever tested in their life. You see um, Hardware Unbox talking about how this card performs um, significantly better than he expected. Um, and it made me realize that this was a unique chance to really see what the Turing architecture or the Turing lineup could have been if the entire Turing architecture was built the same way as the 1660 Ti. What I basically found is, at least looking at um, die density, uh, you know, transistor density, which they have on Tech Power Up um, database, and kind of scaling how many more cores you'd have, you know, basically dividing the um, 2070, you know, over actually, yeah, dividing the 2070 by the 1660 Ti's Q to core count, maybe accounting for, and then accounting for die size, you found that the it would have roughly 5% more cuta cores, however, it's clearly clocks faster, and that's because the die density is less, because similar to Pascal, they've, you know, spaced out the transistors enough that they can clock higher without overheating. So we're looking at about 10% higher clocks, 5% more cuta cores, and one thing I noticed is at least 20 to 50% more ROPs. I had to finagle a little bit in my analysis, but around there. And, and if you look, the 1660 Ti and the 2060 have the same amount of ROPs. And the 2070 has like 60% more die space and yet 50%, you know, only 50% more ROPs while also having a significantly more CUDA cores, right? So it's about, you'd have a, a lot of the tensor cores seem to be taking up the space that all of these other little things would be. If we spaced out our CUDA cores just a little more, we could clock them higher, and we'd have a little more room for ROPs. If we got rid of the tensor cores, a little more room for ROPs, a little more space. And so what I'm about to show you is the conclusion of how I think the lineup would have looked if they would have actually built this thing to be for gaming and not just sell compute cards to gamers. So let's take a quick look at this chart I put together here. On the left, of course, we have the standard configuration of cores. And, you know, bear with me a little bit. I use the high end of the TDP and typically the lower end of the core clocks. I understand the Founders Edition has higher core clocks than these, but for some of them at least. But, but let's be honest, people. Uh, the AIB cards are less efficient. These are moving targets. Hey, NVIDIA overclocked their cards gave them higher TDPs and then tried to argue that the AIB cards had lower TDPs because they're not overclocked, but come on, all those AIB cards, you seem to be less efficient than the Founders Edition for the most part. I mean, I know there's a few outliers, but you know, it doesn't make an overall big change. Your point is that we all know that the Turing architecture, generally their cards use a little more energy than the cards they're replacing. Okay, so what did this all translate into? Well. You're looking at that five, that 10% roughly higher boost clock here and core clock, and also you're looking at a not gigantic but notable um, cuta core increase here. And these are the core configs I believe they likely would have gone with. Keep in mind it could have been 64 higher, 64 lower, a little bit here or there. This is not you know perfect science, but I do believe my numbers are within five to 10% of the truth here. Um, and the I noticed that the ROPs would probably be quite a bit higher. That has a big difference on gaming performance. And I do mean a big difference, people, because if you look at the 290X, for instance, just as an example, it had 40% more cores than the 7970, roughly the same core clocks, and about 30% more bandwidth. 
Um, and yet it had double the ROPs. And there were many games where it was 50% stronger as a result of that. So the ROPs do matter. And so I had to weigh those together when I did the performance increase. I do believe the 2070 would have had less ROPs than the 2080, despite that not being the case um, right now. And you have to understand those are tensor cores, right? That, that's tensor and RT cores being taken up space. If you look at the amount of tensor cores 2080 has over the 2070. It's a substantial amount more. That's what the this all really comes down to. The tensor cores are taking up space that would have gone to ROPs and also allowing the cute cores to spread out a little bit so they could clock higher. So again, let's look at what the overall performance increase probably would have been. You know, 19% higher for the Titan, 19% higher for the 2080 Ti and 2080. And Maybe a 13% increase for the 2070 because I do believe they uh, would have not put nearly as many more ROPs there. And the 2060 is 11% stronger. Now, at first I thought, well, I'm pretty confident in my estimated numbers, but that doesn't sound that great, right? But then you realize that the TDP would also probably be around 10% lower. And once you add it all up, it's actually a bigger difference once you spell out what would happen here. You know, if you look at um, reviews of the Titan RTX, which I'll have one in the description, you can see that the Titan is, in some games, a 120 hertz 4K card, but it usually just misses the mark by about 10 to 20 percent. That's what we're talking about here, people. We're talking about if they would not have used the useless RT and tensor cores, the Titan would have been a true 4K 120 hertz gaming card, and it would have used less energy than most flagships. Most flagship cards. Use 250 to 300 watts. This would have used 243. It would have been cool and quiet and gaming at 4K 120. And a similar story would be told of the 2080 Ti, which, again, you know, we all know it's 5 to 10% weaker overall, maybe a little more in some games. But this would have been a 4K 120 hertz card. I know they market it like it can be, but not without a substantial amount of overclocking. You're still turning down some of those settings with that, you know, 19, almost 20% performance boost. We are talking about 4K 120 hertz gaming. And, you know, considering it would have used less energy than a Vega 56, even the efficient models, you know, about less energy than a 1080 Ti, we would have, I mean, this would have sold like, they had already sold like hotcakes, but wouldn't you rather have that? Wouldn't you rather have been told, hey, the 2080 Ti uses less energy than your current 1080 Ti and it's 20% stronger? I think that's what people were, uh, not 20% stronger, sorry, this is 20% stronger than what the 2080 Ti is now. So it would have been, you know, a full 50% boost in performance. And that's the difference, people. It's not a 20 or 30% boost now. That That is now turning into a 40 to 50% boost in performance while using less energy. And that's what people expected. That's what they got out of Pascal over Maxwell. And instead, they got something that uses decently more energy and is only 20 to 30% stronger. I mean, this does make a difference. I mean, look at the 2080 which they try to market as a 4K 60 hertz card, but in reality, you're still turning down some settings. Again, that extra 20% performance increase while using uh, a little less energy than 1080, than most 1080s. I mean, think about that. This is 1080 Ti performance. Um, I'm sorry, this is almost what we now think of as 2080 Ti performance. Well, using less energy than a 1080, and it gets even more ridiculous when you get towards the bottom, right? I mean, I know that 11% doesn't seem like a big deal, but the TDP difference is a big deal. Um, we're talking about the 2060 now would have been a card that easily outperforms the 1080, probably edges out Vega 64, and yet uses as much energy as a 970. Think about the people who have a 1060. You know, and they were told, well, I know you paid $300 for your 1060 a couple of years ago, and this one's 350 so you're going to have to push your budget that little extra bit more. But guess what? This now is stronger than a 1080, a card you used to covet for double that price. So yeah, some closing thoughts here. I mean, at the end of the day, I want to emphasize useless uh, RT and Tensor cores for gaming. These are more useless than the asynchronous compute cores AMD has us using because uh, they can be used to accelerate performance if done properly. But the RT cores have proven themselves to be only useful for some bolted on faked ray tracing. It's not full ray tracing. It's not real, you know. And 
uh, the even, you know, and it's even more useless than, well, and the even more useless tensor cores. And, and I want to say they're both useless because when the, they first came out, people saw the horrible ray tracing performance and they said, yeah, maybe sometimes I can't tell the difference in lighting, but sometimes I can and it looks great. Yeah, maybe it lowers performance a lot, but who cares? You know what? The DLSS is going to be a bigger deal. And I think now everyone agrees DLSS is way worse than ray tracing. At least ray tracing is something new. You can debate if it's worth anything it does, but the tensor cores, no, they've only been used for an effect that makes the game look worse. So these are useless cores, and, and you know, a third of the die is wasted on this. And with that third of the die, they could have made slightly smaller dies that are more efficient, have a little more cuter cores that are clocked faster with more ROPs to back them up. And we would have gotten, I believe, you know, a 10 to 25% performance increase across the board and a 10% TDP reduction. And that would have been the difference, you know, that would have been everything's worth pushing your budget a little further, especially with AMD not competing. So besides that, a closing thought I want to say too about the 1660 Ti. To be clear, I mean, it's not a bad card. I have my reservations about NVIDIA software. I think the new... Um, Adrenaline drivers are just easier to go through. I, I like their features more. But, I mean, if, if you want a plug-in-and-play card, you know, it's not a bad card. It definitely makes the 590 a joke. The 590 should probably be... I think the 590 should be $200 now. The 580 should be... The 588 gigabyte should be like uh, $170. And the 570, the aging the gene overclocked 470 is what it is should it should probably be 140 130 dollars now and then the 564 gigabyte should be 90 or 80 bucks you know that's where we're at amd has to bottom feed with their polaris cards they've dropped the price of vega 56 to take on the um 1660 ti and i think that's how much it should cost i mean it comes with a ton of excellent games so i think it's an easy choice to get vega 56 over the 1660 ti for that reason uh, but if you don't want any of those games and for some reason you care about power usage while you're gaming, and I do see it, say while you're gaming because at idle they use the, the same energy people and most of the time you're idling. Um, then yeah, 1660 Ti is good and it's the first good launch of Turing because, yes, yeah, certainly the first good launch of Turing and it's because this is what NVIDIA should have made in the first place. Last thing I'll say, my God, we need Navi to overperform. You know, I made a video talking about how the 3870... Um, is probably the, this is what we should expect Navi to be the spiritual successor to, you know. Um, it's not going to be a situation where we have a 4870 beating, you know, coming close to a 2080 Ti for half the pro less than half the price and using way less energy. I don't think we should expect that from Navi. It's still GCM. What I hope we can expect is, and, and to be honest, my personal opinion from at least some of the math I've done and the rumors I've been given, uh, some of the leaks that have been sent to me are really expect the ARCs 3070 to be about 180 bucks again, similar to the 3850, and be a hair below Vega 56. So basically, right up there with the 1660 Ti, but also probably using slightly less energy than the 1660 Ti. That would be a roaring success, I think. And then the RX 3080, I personally think they might charge a full $300 for it, even though I've been told. 250 but we'll see right either way what we're looking at is 2070 performance pretty easily i do think it will beat up by at least five percent though uh, a 2070 killer that it costs half as much and uses less energy that'd be awesome right however i'm really hoping amd can push it and come close to a 2080 for less than half the price because if they could have a 350 dollars card or even a 300 dollars card maybe that comes within 10 percent of a 2080 uh, that would basically make a mockery of the majority of NVIDIA's lineup. It would all be obsoleted. And NVIDIA might actually be forced to drop some of the useless ray tracing stuff and focus on a new gen that they could probably launch by the very end of this year using that extra die space that they have available on 12 nanometer. Remember, they can still make all of these cards 10% bigger, um, at least 10%, maybe 15% bigger. And instead of wasting it on ray tracing cores that will never be useful, um, putting all of that into adding, you know, 30% more CUDA cores, more GDR6 uh, bandwidth, you know, like maybe a 512-bit card with 5,000 CUDA cores that has, well, maybe even more than that, right? Maybe 5,200 CUDA cores. 
with like 50% more ROP. Something like that would blow away 4K gaming. <clears throat> and otherwise, I'm worried they'll just add 10% more CUDA cores and quadruple the ray tracing cores and add a shit ton more tensor cores for their compute customers and then still keep peddling useless DLSS. Well, let me know what you think in the comments uh, below. Please share and subscribe, like the video. This is how I tell which videos people like. I put a lot of effort into this analysis. And uh, yeah, I guess have a good weekend. Or if you're in the future, wait and tell us the weekend, and then have a good weekend. Thank you.